G'day everybody, welcome back to our playthrough of Starfield, hope you guys are doing well. In the previous episode we followed through on, uh, I guess the request of one of the Starborn that we met on the Scorpius. Uh, I think his name is the Ambassador or something like that, well, I guess that's not exactly a name, but uh, the the uh, Barrett version of the Starborn. Uh, which uh, told us to, I guess, investigate one of the old moon bases. And when we did that, it turned out uh, we were actually at a very old NASA uh, test site. And it was apparent that they were testing GravTech technology uh, back when, uh, I guess, humans were still on Earth. Uh, and yeah, the information has led us here at another uh, NASA facility. This one is located, uh, where are we now? We are actually located on Earth uh, this time. I was going to say Mars, it's just because Earth looks like this now. But um, yeah, basically uh, it is a old launch uh, area. It's looking like it was... Uh, where is this situated? So, uh, sort of somewhere around the middle east? Or is that the states? Hang on. No, sorry. Uh, yeah, that, that looks like it's uh, maybe the states. Um, so yeah. Anyway. Um, we are not sure what we're looking for, but we're just following a bit more of a trail. Uh, and I suspect that the grav jump technology is also connected uh, or is connected somehow to uh, the Unity. So hopefully we'll find out a little bit more. Let's have a read here. Launch procedures. Remember the final vitals and suit seal checks are essential. Yes, we've come a long way as for, uh, sorry, as far as tolerances. Yes, the numbers of people cleared for launch is much higher than it used to be, but these people's lives are still in our hands. I know there's rumors that the next launch is slated to be cancelled, but let's not have that be on us. Uh, I assume it's go time every time. Uh, sorry, it's assume it's go time every time. Your professionalism is what makes space travel just a little bit safer, and we can use every ounce we can get. And access station logs. Uh, archives damage, running system recovery, partial archives retrieved. Delivery from Mars. Station log. Dr. Judith Tatien. The recent delivery from Mars is unsettling. I was expecting rock samples or maybe fossils of microbial life. Instead, Dr. Victor Isa comes with two members of the military. Everything they've brought back is under wraps. What could a theoretical physicist need with a sample from Mars? Hmm. Sample from Mars. Station log. Dr. Judith Tatien. I have been trying to cozy up to Dr. Isaac, Victor, to see what is going on. His team has completely commandeered one of the labs with those two military hand refs, checking who comes in and out. I joked that maybe he found a little grey man who was doing an autopsy, and he grew very pale. Two days later, he sends me a request asking for more information on my background in material science, metallurgical engineering. Oh, we have a meeting tomorrow. I... I think I'm being invited into the lab. Very mysterious. Station log. Dr. Judith Latin. I have never been so nervous since I defended my dissertation. Four hours talking to Victor and his team about theoretical metals, atomic bonding, even a half hour divergence into magnetism that I'm pretty sure was just to throw me off the trail of what we were actually talking about. Then I got to see the lab. I, I don't know how much I should say, but the periodic table just got thrown out the window. Hmm. Almost sounds like something she saw that was uh, 
defying all of the laws of science itself. Must be to do with the unity, somehow. Doesn't look like there's anything here. I wonder if we're going to find another artifact or something down here. I don't know if I should be prepared for a fight or some pamphlets there. Just keeping an eye out for slates and stuff as well to hopefully explain a little bit more about the story. Ooh, they could have automated defenses. That's a possibility. screen to learn more. Leaving Earth forever. In 2150, scientists first predicted the destruction of our beloved Earth. Atmospheric phenomena would cause breathable air to sputter outside of Earth's gravity, dooming all life that remained. An estimated 50 years until the end has given NASA and other space agencies around the world the opportunity to migrate humanity away from certain death and into the stars. Thanks in part to the development of the grav drive, hum uh, humanity will live on. Mm, yeah. It almost seems coincidental that we also found the grav, uh, grav drive, you know, in the nick of time. I mean, it could have been, I, I don't know if it was a span of hundreds of years or something like that, but still, relative to the amount of time that time has existed obviously um you know that's nothing okay so it's it's almost like a bit of a museum here that there are uh, displays everywhere f1 engine developed for the apollo mission to reach earth's moon the f1 engine was a single nozzle liquid fueled rocket engine that could generate over six million newtons of thrust each Five of these would be used in the Saturn V super heavy lift launch vehicle. The power of the F-1 was critical in providing the necessary lift to launch rockets from the surface of the Earth towards the stars. Bit of space history there. Uh, trying not to miss anything. Let's take a look at this. Lunar Rover. From 1971 to 1972, the Lunar Rover was used for the last Apollo missions and could carry two astronauts. The Chevron tread patterns on the wheel were made from titanium to help maintain traction on the moon's surface. The Rover was also fully electric and ran on batteries whose power was intended to last for the duration of the mission. Very cool. Yeah, I don't know if we're at, um... I, I don't really know my, uh, my space, uh... history very well, but I wonder if we're at I think it's Cape Canaveral or something like that, where a lot of space uh, rockets are launched from, and perhaps maybe they've got a bit of a museum there. Um, again, I could be wrong. The Mars Exploration Rover program launched in 2003 and allowed for the remote exploration and study of Mars. Two twin rovers were made, nicknamed Spirit and Opportunity. While Spirit ceased communication functions in 2010, the Opportunity rover continued operations well into 2018, exceeding its initial planned time by over 14 years. Uh, 
And if I'm not mistaken, guys, uh, we could potentially try and find the location of Curiosity in this game as well. It, uh, it must be somewhere sitting on the surface of Mars. Um, I might actually look that up and see if we can maybe do an episode where we try to, to find it. Here's an Eagle module. From the Apollo 11 mission, the lunar module Eagle was the first crewed spacecraft to touch down on Earth's moon. Eagle's counterpart was the command module Columbia, which the lunar module needed to both separate from and eventually reattach to. Columbia would take astronauts to and from the orbit of the moon, while Eagle would bring them to and from the surface. Project PRISM, NASA partnered with Nova Galactic, the creators of the Voltaire supercomputer, on an ambitious aerospace project to pull gravity itself. The result is the first spacecraft capable of faster than light travel. First successful voyage saw astronauts reaching Jupiter in moments, uh, what would previously take in years. Project Prism, uh, okay, yeah, this is the same thing. Okay, again, same thing. Living outside Earth, while long-term missions in space began in the late 1990s with programs such as the International Space Station, humanity began living on other planets almost 100 years later. Small outposts of five or fewer scientific research teams eventually gave way to entire colony efforts on Mars and other orbiting bodies of our solar system. Hmm. And whatever we need to reach is over there. I'm keen on going back upstairs. Seeing if we can just look around there. If there is anything to check out actually, but... Maybe there's nothing. Okay. That's about it, I guess. I haven't found any magazines. Seems like a good place to to find some magazines, but personal recording. I just don't understand where these calculations came from. There's something wrong with the math? I think it's quite straightforward. That's not what I'm asking. We've had no success extracting even a sample of material from the object. No explanation for the gravitational effects. No motion graph to explain its harmonic frequencies. I can't even establish a melting point. Judith. But you've had me building these prototype colliders for months. And now you want me to pump helium-3 into it based on this equation you've written on a goddamn napkin? I just need you to trust me. I have been trusting you. We keep slamming our heads against a brick wall, getting nothing. And you keep coming up with something new to try. Like, you know what's going to happen. Where are you getting your information, Victor? I'm sorry, Judith. I... Look, not here, okay? Somewhere off base. I'll tell you everything. But I'm not lying, okay? We're going to discover something important here. I promise. Find information about the prototype grav drive. Okay, whatever happened here, obviously the base got abandoned, but it seems like other people have been digging around and snooping around this place already. I mean, that would be the only explanation for these tunnels that seem to have been dug up, connecting the various rooms that haven't collapsed. Either that or it's just conveniently there. Oh, 
That was a bit disappointing. At the very least, they could have given us some stuff. <laughs> oh, man. What on earth were they doing here? There's somewhere we can get through, maybe up here. Power required. Okay. As they don't really want us to leave until we've done what we needed to do around this place. Uh, expert. Okay. Could be a bit of a challenge. That's obviously going to be in the last spot. We need one of the one prongs for this as well. So I'm going to try and reserve these two. Now. Or the rest would be a bit of a challenge. Um, that looks all right. Yeah, maybe. I guess plenty of one prong pieces here we could use, so. Let's just do that. We should be able to get through like so. Good. Wasn't too bad. But I guess this is not the way. Ah, okay. This is the way. <laughs> Power switch. What? Yeah, this is going pretty deep uh, for a, a space launch center slash museum. So perhaps there was a little bit more going on here. Yeah, I guess we might as well try and get through these various places. Why not? Okay, that looks good. That could work. Emergency power cell. We might need that. I'll hold off until we're certain that we need it. Ooh, 
Ooh, we've got a NASA maintenance key here. Guess I might as well take that. Don't really know where it leads, but maybe somewhere down here. Okay, there are emergency power cells everywhere, apparently. Another one. Power required. Yeah, and the power cell is just going to go in there. Right. Anything worth looking at here, though? I think the answer might be no. Alright, let's grab one of these things. And this facility seems kind of endless so far. <laughs> okay, yeah, I, th I thought I heard something. And, uh, I think it's actually this turret over here. There's another one over there. take a look at our weights yeah we are looking kind of bad when it comes to um, our weight situation so uh, I might actually just get rid of the Equinox here we have been picking up quite a few materials and yeah I mean cash neither here nor there at this point Right. Relative safety. Uh, what's going on here? So they were doing some experiments with the uh, Model A robots. Okay. Just heard quite a bit of banging noises there. I have no idea what's going on. Uh, I am getting that radioactive marker on the, uh, the suit HUD, but I can't remember if that's a bug or if that's genuinely something that's come up because we're being here. Um, actually, apparently we are still carrying too much stuff. Um, why is that? This is not really going to be weighing too much. And, ah, uh, okay. It could be the spacesuit. Navigator spacesuit. Yeah, there's plenty of these, so I'm going to get rid of this as well. And I really shouldn't uh, worry too much about making so much cash because we've got so much of it right now. And, uh... I'm not entirely sure if we're going to be spending a lot of our cash. Um, as I feel like we're getting sort of towards the end of the playthrough, considering where we are with the main storyline for, um, for Constellation, so... 
Do you have a tendency of, you know, hoarding all that cash but then not using it? I think a lot of RPG players have that problem as well. <laughs> Alright, so we do have a way forward. I'm sort of wanting to backtrack a little bit because I did see this and I wonder if we can actually get through. Power acquired, okay. Our power lines, okay. So it's gone into there. Can we see that come through here? Yes, okay. Oh, it's just a switch, is it? I see. Okay. I thought we were looking for more batteries or something. Uh, this is just the turret control, I think, so I'm not going to bother with that. I mean, sure, it gives us a little bit of experience and stuff, but... Probably not entirely required. Uh, I think I also should be using, I don't know, I reckon anti-grav field. Yeah, we'll use that. Funnily enough, the, the very first thing that we get is probably the most useful thing in the entire game. Ooh, a bit of a stash here. More spacesuits. Again, I'm probably going to leave that. Okay, right. It's all this material that we're we're now carrying, and uh, that's definitely causing a bit of an issue. So, yeah, we've got a lot of fiber, don't we? Let's drop, like, I don't know, 10? Gives us two more points in mass to work with. And if we see something like really, really good, like maybe uh, a gold item, and we can obviously pick that up, but. Seems safe enough. No goodies though. Security procedures. Check all badges before allowing access. Yes, even the generals. I don't care how angry they get. They are... Uh, these are direct orders from the secretary. Absolutely no phones or recording devices. All written materials, clipboards, notebooks are to be checked on exit from the labs. Confiscate anything with confidential information on it. Uh, station logs. April 14th, 2138. Project log. Dr. Victor Isa. We turned on the prototype today. The gravitational field around it began to fold as we long suspected. Complete reversal of gravitational pull was observed on dozens of loose objects around the lab. I'm setting up a meeting with the directors to propose a larger test. The prototype proves we don't need the original anymore, but further work is going to have to take place in space. Somewhere with abundant helium-3 and with a civilian partner. Someone with access to large-scale manufacturing resources and computational equipment. Engineering gravitational folds pulling the far side of the solar system closer to us? It's all going to be possible. Hmm. Okay. I guess this is all just... 
uh, the initial discovery of grab drive technology, right? So, yes, sounds exciting at the time, but I mean, we're living it right now, so I'm not sure why we're here and why we're needing to discover all of this. Project log, Dr. Judith Tatien. I watched the Gravjad tests from the moon today. It was the first time we were able to talk to the team at Nova Galactic directly. So many things were under wraps before, but now everyone wants all the publicity they can get. I'm already seeing proposals for manufacturing androids of drives, expeditions to Alpha Centauri and beyond. It's also overwhelming and worrying. It could take years, decades, before we know what all these side effects of operating a grab drive can be, but no one wants to hear that right now. Like a bunch of pioneers racing towards the edges of the frontier without knowing about the grizzly bears in the mountains. Yeah, I guess that's sort of true, isn't it? People didn't really want to hear about the dangers, they just saw opportunity. Another door here leading to more doors. Okay, this is leading to the same room. Just taking things a little bit more careful here. I think we should be able to get this open pretty easily. There we go. 15 XP for that one, that's decent. Uh, something through here, another safe. Antique videotape. <laughs> Maybe this is like a VHS or a Betamax or something like that. Apparently it's worth 655 creds. Um, don't think it's really worth bringing though. Uh, okay. I think I'll go with just the, uh, the ammo. Tempting to grab another weapon, but you know, we just don't have the capacity right now. Oh god, alright. We are in some sort of anti-gravity field. What? How did that happen? 
And now it's leaking throughout the facility, or...? Oh no, okay. It stopped. Uh... Let's go this way first. Oh, okay. Yep. <laughs> Got a dead scientist down there. Let me go back. Okay, and there, there's basically anti-grav in certain sections of this base. Very odd. Okay. Um, elevators are not working. Huh. Alright, I think everything is just pretty much leading into the same place, so... Let's work from this side. I wonder if that's... the very first, like, grab drive that people experimented with. Could be. Something going on there. I mean, does grav tech generate like an anti-grav field or something? seems to fit. And there's only one layer it's good for, so I guess we might use it there. And there's this. Uh, that fits as well. Yeah, those two could probably work together. Whichever way we go, I feel like we'd have to use these two to get through the front, I think. Let me just plan things out here for the final layer as well. Okay, if we do this for the final layer, we're going to need one of these, though, to fit the last slot. So, uh, maybe that's not the answer. Um, oh, okay, I didn't realize that there's this piece here. Okay, that works now. Right. Oh god, alright. I, uh... Shouldn't have just picked things up willy-nilly. Yeah, I definitely don't want that. Yep, don't need any of that either, so that was kind of... a worthless exercise.
I don't know. I don't know if I should keep, like, trying to unlock all of the doors. This is, like, a NASA facility, so I'm sort of curious about, you know, unlocking all the things. Ooh, there is some kind of a, a room here, hidden away. With nothing in it. I wonder if this leads back up to, um, to where we were before. I think it does. Okay, maintenance key. Gets us through here. This was the dead scientist that we saw from above. He's got the maintenance key as well, so we didn't exactly need to grab the maintenance key from before. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about stuff like that, because, uh, you know, if you missed the maintenance key and you saw that it required the maintenance key, that could possibly encourage you to backtrack and explore a little bit more thoroughly. Uh, so yeah, we need to get through there. I'm thinking maybe with the anti-grav field we just simply take this and maybe go and float ourselves to the middle. Yeah, I think we saw this area before. Alright, computer's just over there. Victor Aza. Uh, but let's just look around a little bit before we interact with the main objective. What's that? Okay, nothing. I just can't help myself, guys. Uh, let's see. That might be what we're looking for, right there. Oh my god, another one. I'm not gonna bother with that. <laughs> Might not be worthwhile anyway. Righto. So, let's check out what we can find here. So first things first though. Okay, another maintenance key. We don't need that. Uh, there's a lot of blood here. I wonder if Victor was murdered at some point. So, prototype drive. Please be careful whenever running power through the prototype. Secure all loose objects and have researchers empty pockets and remove jewelry, watches, etc. Reminder that the core of the drive contains a specimen that is irreplaceable and all data is under the strictest clearance. Exercise all caution with all research materials and ensure information does not leave this lab. Station logs again, February 12, 2149. I never actually got to visit your labs back when we were working on the grav drive projects. Seems like ancient history now. Only thing we're doing these days is launching weather satellites. Guess this is as good a retirement as any. Now, Project Demeter, you want our help manufacturing scanners to better track these new meteorological patterns we're seeing. 
Our guess is that the balls might be naturally shifting, causing some gravitational fluctuations that are throwing off our old models. Why do you need the scanning tolerances to be so small? What are you trying to find? I... just want to be sure. It's, it's not like we're doing much these days anyway. The glory days are over. Why not give ourselves a challenge before they write us off in the history books? Okay, this is some kind of uh, email, maybe. As requested, the astrophysicists, uh, sorry, astrophysics research team has done a full analysis of the data you provided us. Measurements of the Earth's magnetosphere show clear signs of fluctuation, often in correlation to the periods of frequent and large gravity wave spikes emanating from the moon. These gravity waves seem to be affecting the magnetic field sorry, shield, provided by the Earth's inner core, and may be affecting the core itself given the uh, proximity to the source. The data indicates the change rate is increasing exponentially. As our magnetosphere falters, its ability to protect us from the sun's solar wind falters. Beyond the devastating effects of solar radiation, this will lead to something more dire. The sputtering, or stripping away of our atmosphere. This has happened before to Mars, a planet studied since the earliest days of space, to see into Earth's possible future. We are afraid this future may be closer than we ever thought imaginable. Some may view this data as normal. There have been historical fluctuations and polarity changes of Earth's core, but this is, this is orders of magnitudes greater. We see echoes of previous generations' debates over global warming, and we want the science here to be clear. Like waves in the ocean, these gravity waves rise and eventually crash into the shore, the Earth, with devastating consequences. Dr. Luke Andrews, ART Chief Scientist. I know what I'm seeing, Victor. The data coming back from the satellites is very clear. It's the graph drives. All those jumps from the moon. At this rate, Earth's atmosphere is going to start sputtering out into space. Can the drives be fixed? I'm working on some designs that should discreetly solve the problem. Under the guise of an emergency update to the fueling pumps. We're talking about the end of Earth, and you're trying to be subtle about it. Judith, the last thing we need is people losing faith in grab drive technology. That might be our only option. To what? Are you seriously saying we should abandon Earth? The timeline is under 50 years. A blink of an eye for a planet, but more than enough time for a human exodus. And what do we tell people? We say it's an act of God, one that science has found a solution for. Time for humanity to take its place in the stars. You know, didn't you? You lied to me. I... All this time! I dedicated my life to this discovery, Victor. And you knew we were going to kill off our planet? You haven't seen the future I've seen. There's an infinite expanse of promise out there. A meteor could have hit Earth. A plague, another world war. Colonizing other galaxies secures humanity's future for all coming generations, across all time. At the expense of our home. Stop it, both of you. All that matters is building enough ships to get everyone off this planet. And we need to start now. I'll draft up a statement. We'll need to address the entire international community. I'm sorry, Judith. There isn't a planet in this universe that will be far enough away from you, Victor. We are never speaking again after this is over. Well, there you go. A revelation of how Earth became as it is to today, well, in-game, that is. So, it turns out grav drive technology, when it was invented initially, was actually unsafe. And I guess you could see that Judith was sort of preluding to that um, with her little sort of spiel uh, in her log or whatever uh, around, uh, you know, uh, pioneers going to space, not really caring about the dangers, and 
well, lo and behold, we just discovered what those dangers are. So somehow these grav drives were, I guess, putting holes into the atmosphere or something along those lines uh, and causing Earth to lose its, I, well, I guess the, the contents of its atmosphere. So all the, you know, uh, gases that would occupy uh, the, you know, the air, uh, the, well, the atmosphere, I guess. <laughs> I don't know the right words, guys. My name is Dr. Victor Isa. And if you're listening to this, then you probably already know the truth. I was young when I first headed the retrieval team of an odd gravitational anomaly on Mars. But I kept what really happened that day hidden from everyone except one other person. Even she didn't believe me at first. But I have no reason to lie to anyone now, so I... I hope you'll accept this... confession. Whoever you are. When I touched the anomaly, I experienced twelve days of lost time. I met myself. He told me everything that has since come true. The grav drive equations, the tests on the moon, Earth's atmosphere sputtering away because of what we had done. But he also told me about a city thriving on a planet orbiting a distant star. Human culture, art, music. Lifestyles evolving and shining brightly across all of space. What price would I be willing to pay for that future? Maybe you don't believe me. Maybe Judith was right and I'm just a coward who wants to believe his mistakes were justified. But everyone has forgotten about the real origins of the grav drive. This artifact from Mars. I hope you make better use of it than I did. Artifact from Mars. There you go. Um... Didn't we pick up one of the artifacts from Mars already? I think we did. I wonder if it would be the same one, or perhaps maybe a different one. Anyway. There you go, so... We learnt a hell of a lot from that. Um... Apparently we now need to... Release... Oh, okay, so there's an artifact captured in this small chamber, I guess. Uh, and we need to retrieve it. Maybe. Originating from Mars. There you go. Alright, we need to get back in there somehow. Um, what's the best way to get in there? Those backtracking shouldn't be too difficult. Uh, maybe... Should we go... Above us? Wow, okay. These guys had one of these artifacts all along. All those years. God damn it. Alright, alright. We need to get out of here, but we need to survive trying to get out of here. So... I guess they're gonna be waiting for us in some of the upper levels. Uh, and yes, it's the emissary <laughs> that, uh, that I was, uh... Well, the star one that I was talking about before. So, not the ambassador. My bad. So, the Starborn, uh, they're not going to be able to be affected by anti-grav, right? So, uh, I'm gonna probably want to switch things out to... I don't think we can send star stuff either. I think solar flare is probably the best option here. Maybe I want... 
a better weapon. Solstice, perhaps? A duplicate. Okay. Okay, this Starborn has like a mag shear or something. Oh lord. to grenade myself there. Good stuff. More XP. Definitely like that. Hard to get like a really good angle on this weapon. Let's go with some shotgun work. Okay. Yeah, too bad. They don't exactly leave anything behind, do they? I'd love to be able to, you know, loot their spacesuits or space helmets, stuff like that. The Starborn kind of look pretty cool. Um, power required, alright, alright. Okay, this time we do need a battery. Not a problem at all. been through here? Maybe we have. Uh, could cut through here, potentially. These guys actually heal quite a bit as well. There we go. Oh, actually, no. It's still alive. What is going on with this one? I don't recall this room, to be honest. Um, perhaps maybe we are in a different section. Seems to be some kind of habitation test, almost. I don't know why there's a lot of soil in it, though. Ah, 
Ow. Just heal up a little bit. Not really sure what kind of power that was, but... That was a pretty decent throw. Okay. Where are we at? Let's just do a few reloads and stuff. enemies it seems. This is definitely where we came from so let's head back outside. Don't know if there are any Starborn waiting for us outside actually. Doesn't seem like it. That's good. Uh, we do need to just quickly pick up um, Andresia before leaving. Retrieve waiting followers. Yeah, she is just over here. Oh, need a moment. Oh, hello. Uh, yeah, let's I get moving. Back. All right, brilliant. So let's take a look at what we actually need to do here. So we need to talk to the emissary. All right. Um, I guess we need to get back to. Oh, the emissary's over there, apparently. Right, 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 right. Well, uh, why don't we just Did you need something? get her to wait here a little bit more? Uh, she might randomly join this conversation, but uh, we're going to have a chat with the emissary, but I think we're probably going to do that when we come back in the next episode, guys, because uh, it's been... What? About an hour or so, so I think it's time for a break. When we come back, we'll have a chat, see what they tell us about what they know about the origins of the Grav Drive. Uh, and obviously the Grav Drive technology is connected with the artifacts and, uh, as a result, indeed, connected to the Unity itself. So uh, it's interesting that, um, you know, the Unity is not the only thing that the... Uh, the artifacts are producing or have produced it's also produced the means by which uh we have uh traversed the stars so very very interesting revelation anyway i'm signing out here guys uh hope you enjoyed this one leave a like or a dislike or a comment or two down below stay true and i'll see you guys in the next one